it's August. So naturally on this edition of Farming at Home, we're talking about harvest. You've probably seen the combine harvesters rolling all over the county. And for many farmers, although it's a lot of hard work, it's a time of great enjoyment and pleasure for harvesting that crop that they've been looking after for 12 months. To tell us a bit more about it, we're actually visiting James's home farm in Puddletown. And I think he's somewhere up there. Baloney is 150 tonnes of wheat, which is where bread comes from. There is 400 tonnes of barley, which is where beer comes from. During the UK lockdown, sales of flour rose by a whole 82%. And arable crops like this are worth 4.2 billion to the UK economy. We're gonna catch up with the experts now to learn where it all starts. My brother, Rupert, and father, Wakely. Hello, we're uh, here in, near Puddletown, Dorchester and Dorset on a mixed farm, a beef, sheep and arable farm. Um, we grow uh, a mixture of arable crops, normally wheat and barley. Um, no, uh, no proteins or oilseed crops this year. Hello, I'm Rupert. Um, I'm fifth generation of the farm here um, on, on the land, um, along with my brother Ben and um, parents Wakely and Caroline. D traditionally in farming, um, the calendar would have started with the, the plan of the land ready to drill the drill the seeds you would have ploughed in the autumn ready for your, your spring crops as you can see here we're going straight in with the drill and as farm has progressed and we, we've started direct drilling and it would it reduces a, a lot of fuel bills and wear and metal and much better for the soil and the worms and um, keeps the carbon carbon in the ground you shut the gate on the crop and um, the winter weather does its thing and then come February and the days start getting a bit longer, a bit of better sunlight and it starts to warm up. We would then um, be putting the first of the fertilizer on to really, really spring the crops into action um, and, and really get them growing. A fertilizer is a plant food. We have to feed the crop um, to make it grow. And then we would start, start a spray schedule um, in early spring. And we also use sprays to, to keep the weeds down because weeds are a competition to the crop and also fungicides for diseases and and things and pests and things we have to we have to look out of the crop the same way as you look anything else at, and gardeners look out of their things we have to do the same with our, our crop because um, one little seed gets planted in the ground at something like 200 kilos per hectare and we're looking for a yield of somewhere about 10 tons 12 tons a hectare so it's amazing how much it it will grow and how much it will produce but unless we look out to it it won't and then also in the spring any any spring sown crops but barley and wheat again you can sow in the spring um, and um, we would be sowing them in um, ideally in March. With the arable crops, it's probably one of the things in farming which is really is reliant on the weather. If you don't get the rain, you don't get the sun, and it really, really does affect your yield. And um, you really do want that, that sunshine through the spring and the summer, especially early summer, June sort of time when the, when the, the wheat's really soaking up the sunshine um, to get that, get that big ear. I know, when the corn is fit, we call it fit when the grain is nice and ripe and it'll rub out, normally when the straw is nice and yellow. Usually, depending on the weather and, and the varieties, we, we start in the middle of July. Um, the, the combine, the big massive green machine you see there, um, that is uh, actually you feed in the front, the corn goes in the front, straw comes out the back and in the middle is a big separation process, separates the grain out, puts it into a big bin, and then we come in with tractors and trailers and haul the grain away and then that goes in the grain store for storage. Um, the straw we use is belled for the, for the cattle for bedding and, and livestock feeding um, later on. It's quite a process to, to do it. We need dry weather to do it. The grain has to be at below 15% uh, moisture content when we sell it away to the grain merchant. So we really are reliant on sunshine. If not, it takes a lot of energy, whether it be electric or diesel or gas, um, to dry the grain down. If we get, like we had this year, two thunderstorms um, in a week, and we had an inch of rain one day in an hour and I think an inch of rain in half an hour the next time it really damages the crop and knocks lots of heads off on the ground. Equally as much if it's very hot like 30 degree temperatures in the day and um, that can make the grain very hot in the pile as well. As, uh, we have the, the fan stuck in the corn to try and cool it down. The straw that comes out the back of the combine is to an arable farmer sometimes a bit of a waste product. Um, to a livestock farmer it's what they bed their cattle and their sheep up on, on during the winter months then that will then be used as manure and put back onto the arable land. Putting compost on your vegetable garden would be us putting the cattle manure 
onto the arable fields. When the corn's all dry and, and ready for movement, some we use for our own cattle. We roll it, put it through a, a roller mill and flatten it out and mix it with protein pellet and minerals and things and feed to the cows and sheep. Um, a lot of our surplus, it gets sold away to other local feed mills for cattle uh, feed. Um, sometimes if it's a good quality, it'll go for some of the wheats will go for uh, biscuit making or bread making and the barleys can go for beer and lager making as well, but they've got to be the special varieties that can do that. Um, but we sell it throughout the year, lorries come in, 29 tonne arctic lorries come in and pick the grain up and take it off to various locations. Some of the grain gets exported out, the, out of um, the ports at Southampton and Portland. So there's a lot of hard work that goes into harvest, but uh, what does it mean to you, the sense of satisfaction once the job is done? Uh, yeah, there's an awful lot of satisfaction. Um, and you've, you realise the yield of the crop at the end of the hay, you've had a, you've had a rough, especially this year, you've had a, a very wet autumn, a very wet winter and a, a wet spring and then a, then a, a big dry time and um, then it, you, you're sort of building up to it and really worried what it's going to yield like and then um, when it comes to it, it's, it's perhaps not as bad as you, you thought it was going to be so there's a sense of relief there um, but yeah, there's a, lot, there's a lot of stress and a, a lot of long hours and a lot of dust and a lot, a lot of sweating, um, but I think it's all worth it and I, we all enjoy it. The end of harvest is, is the end of that, that year and it's quite a, quite a nice thing to come through the whole lot, seeing how your crops have done and uh, get to the final bit and quite a relief because it is quite a stressful time because you're very reliant on the, the weather, as I said before, and the crop coming through and producing the yield to pay all the bills. That's what you're reliant on and, and uh, really is, is that end product coming into the barn. From drilling in the autumn to harvesting in the summer and ending up in a grain store like this, arable grains have become some of our favourite products like beer, bread and cake. Thank you to the Cox family for taking the time to talk to us and join us again on Farming at Home. For more information, go to the Dorset County Show or Gillingham and Shaftesbury Show social media pages. Any chance all you've got a bottle opener? Oh, mine's already open. Oh.